Okay, so in this video, I share my review of the all new Apple Watch SE here. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, first things first, the way I approach the Apple Watch SE is the same way I approach the regular Apple iPad, the current iPad 9, right? So it's the budget offering by Apple, but yet it still stands to a level where it offers the vast majority of features or options that you would find available on the flagship levels or the flagship models, right? Like this one, for example, the SE here, is essentially the new Apple Watch Series 8. Like it offers almost everything that is offered on the Apple Watch Series 8. The way I see it, this is the watch that everyone who's interested in buying an Apple Watch should go for. 250 bucks, given everything that it has to offer, including the same platform found on the Apple Watch Series 8, right? So why wouldn't you want to save some money and pick up this guy here, right? Some people may think, oh, maybe it's smaller. Not really. So in terms of design, you get two options here, the 40 millimeter or the 44 millimeter. On the Apple Watch Series 8, you get the option for 41 millimeter or a 45 millimeter. So in terms of just physical appearance, they don't really look that much different. Now, the display on the other hand is where you'd be able to tell which is which, because on the Apple Watch SE here, you would find that the bezels are slightly thicker than what you have on the Series 8. This watch, of course, is offered in a few different options, and I mean colors, and in terms of bands, obviously, it's interchangeable. You can use this on other ones, you know, back and forth in between different Apple Watches, and you'll get a wide range of Apple bands where you can choose one from. So it is compatible with all of that. Now the body of the watch, of course, what you have on the back here would be where you have your sensors, right? So your heart rate sensors, sleep tracking, all of that good stuff. All of the sensors will be on the back when that touches, you know, that goes against your skin. On the left hand side, you have the speakers. You know, it's not crazy loud, but it is there. You can still hear people when they're talking to you, assuming you're communicating with people, you know, via your watch, you should be able to hear them without any issues. The crown as well on the right hand side there, that's what you use to navigate and kind of, you know, go through your different apps or going from one app to the other. And below that, you also do have a button. You have a button there that can you can use to recall the previously opened app or in a way to just quickly access some of the apps that you use frequently. And just like current generation devices, you do have Bluetooth, here you have Wi-Fi. This is also available in, you know, in cellular mode. It's also water resistant, just like it is the case with the Apple Watch Series 8. I'm always going to bring that up just to let you know, or just to show you how comparable to the Series 8 it is, right? So if you have this on and if you were to, I don't know, you out walking and it starts raining, you should still be fine. In fact, you can even go swimming with this guy here and you'll be fine for a good amount of time. Now, even though it shares tons of similarities with the Apple Watch Series 8, they, you know, of course, as I mentioned, there are a few things like just a few things that it doesn't have, like some of the newer features, like specifically the temperature tracking. You may have heard this by now, Apple and Samsung, they're both doing it. And what they're doing is they included this temperature sensor feature that is geared more towards women, you know, I believe in terms of like tracking cycles and things like that. But anyway, so that's one of the things that you don't have here. You also don't have the ability to have the always on display like you have, let's say with even just the watch ultra here, the Apple watch ultra here. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you want that type of watch where you could just have it and it's always on, then you won't have that here. So these are just some of the things that are not really that major, right? So it, they're not really true deal breakers, right? So if you really want an Apple Watch and you were to buy this, some of those things would not really deter you from buying this. But of course, if you are specifically looking for those things, then these would be deal breakers for you. But despite missing just some of the new features, you still have access to many of the very truly important new features because remember some of the stuff that it's missing you can still find a way by just downloading an app right so for example the temperature sensor that you have on the apple series 8 that i mentioned earlier you know which help women tracking their cycle you could download an app that can help you do that right if you're a woman and you're in the market for something like this you can simply download an app that can help you do that sure it's going to be more manual way but you should still be able to do that now in terms of other new features that are available on the series 8 also available here would be like the crash detection feature where if, if you were in a car accident, you know, it would automatically call emergency services to assist you. You have that available on here. And I know a lot of people have been liking, you know, love that feature on the newer Apple watches, right? So you definitely do have that on the SE. Now let's go ahead and quickly brush over some of the specs here. It's essentially the same chipset 
that you find on the Series 8, right? So the Series 8 chipset is pretty much, they're pretty much sharing the same processing power, which is of course impressive for something that costs a little bit more than half of what you'll be paying for the Series 8, right? So that's really good. And you also have 32 gigs of internal storage here, which is really, really good. And that also goes for the battery life. The battery life here matches that of the Series 8. Again, 18 hours, right? So same battery, same chipset, same user experience, right? So you get 18 hours in terms of battery. In my usage, I've been getting about a, day, a little bit over a day, same as you would get with the Series 8. That's essentially what you should be expecting. So this is something that you buy in order for you to just go through your day without any issues. I would suggest that you just charge this at night and then put it back on your wrist in the morning. Now it also depends on how often you use your watch, how often you click, you know, you on the on the display there. So if you're constantly on it, you know, you might see less because obviously this whole thing is subjective. But anyway, so you should be getting about a day, a little bit over a day, meaning every night when you get home, you're gonna have to put this on a charger so that you can enjoy it throughout the following day. Now, when working out with it, and it's a great watch to work out with, you get all of the same data that you would get from the Series 8, right? So if you're missing something, just go ahead and download the download an application that can offer you the same stuff. The GPS is also very accurate on here, along with the sensors, all of the different sensors that you have, whether it's sleep tracking and sharing all of your workout data or your sleep data, all of that seems has seemed very accurate in my user experience. Now, speaking of user experience, it's the same as the Series 8. Same as, you know, we say with the Apple iPad Air 5 versus an iPad Pro, right? Same user experience, same display. So what I said earlier was that you have slightly thicker bezels. That would be the only difference. Otherwise, navigating, going through different apps and changing displays is essentially the same. What are you reading? You're going over your, the statistics that the watch is giving you in terms of the data. Maybe you're working out and all that good stuff. So this is for most people. I personally advise, I strongly advise people who are currently looking for an Apple Watch to go for the SE. You get almost everything that you would normally get from the flagship ones, of course. But like I said, there are a few missing pieces, right? Even the EKG, you don't get the EKG reading on here. But again, not a lot of people use that, right? And some people actually claim that it's not as accurate as what you would get from, you know, an actual medical facility. But, you know, that's one of the things that you don't necessarily have here, but most people don't need that. But again, if you do need that, go for the Series 8. But either way, if I were to choose between the, all three watches, meaning the Apple Watch Ultra, the Apple Watch Series 8, and the SE, I would say go for the SE. That's what I've been telling everyone. But anyway, that's just my take. What is your take? Are you currently in the market for this watch? What are you looking for? Do you have any additional questions that I may not have answered that you would like for me to answer? Make sure to put your questions in the comment section. Of course, that's where I will be catching you. Make sure to like, share, of course, the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit that subscribe button. I'm also going to catch you in the next video. Up until that next video, of course, as always, stay safe out there.